Hi again, everyone. Welcome to our, our final day of devotions for this week, where we've been looking at enduring the trials and sufferings we go through in life, but, but realizing we don't do it alone. We, we are doing this together with God, with each other. We've learned a lot about why we suffer, why we have to endure, how we are to endure, what, what shape that takes in our life. And, and so the final thing, uh, as, there's many more things we could say about enduring in this life uh, based on God's word. But the, the last thing we're going to, to leave you with today is the reason that you endure and, and the way that you endure is for the sake of others, for the sake of your neighbor, the person that's not you in this life. That's what Paul is getting at in Romans chapter 15, verses 1 and following. Paul says, We who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Each of us should please his neighbor for his good, to build him up. For even Christ did not please himself, but, as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. So the short and sweet answer is, why, among many other reasons, why do we have to endure suffering? Well, God tells us through Paul, it's so that you can be taken outside of yourself and think about other people. So that you can realize in suffering, you are, you are forced to look at the world of pain and evil and sickness and death around you. And you are, you are forced to see that conclusion. You're not the only one who has problems. I mean, has this ever happened to you? where you're, you're telling something or someone about all the things you're going through in life, all your problems, and then they tell you a little about their life and you, you realize, oh, I guess I don't have it so bad then. There are people out there who endure much worse than I do. Or, or maybe it's not that they are, have it worse than you, but they're going through something very similar, the same thing as you. And, and while it's not exactly the same, you can tell each other, things of, of comfort and guidance and advice that, that you can at least have the knowledge, you know, I'm not enduring this alone. See, when Paul wrote these words to the Christians at Rome, there was a, a, a large number of them in different places in life. Some of them had weaker faith and stronger faith as it applied to God's word in their life. But Paul's whole point in this was simply to say, you are not here for yourself. God has put you here in this world. He has saved you through Christ so that as you live your life, you are here for other people. You are here to endure them sometimes. The people we have to bear with are other people. Their problems that they give us in life. Or, or else, as we've said, we are here to help them bear their burdens and they are here to help us. And, and the reason, the way you can do all that, as Paul says, is because that's what Christ has done for you. Jesus didn't come to serve himself or to be served, but to serve you. And, and not to please himself, but to do what is pleasing to God for your sake, to save you. Jesus has endured so much more that we could never endure. He has endured all things, the worst of the worst, so that we wouldn't have to endure them. And so that we could know the source of our comfort and strength is found in him alone, and then take that comfort and strength and give it to others so they can endure as well. And so finally, our last thought in all of this is what Paul says in verse 4, that the reason you have that Bible on your lap, that, that word of God on your shelf, is so that you can endure. Paul says, for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. It doesn't matter if it's your, your favorite Bible passage or, or the, the new one you read yesterday that you never had really thought about before. Or if it's Adam and Eve receiving the promise of a Savior or Noah being told there's going to be a lot of problems coming your way, but I'm going to save you. Or if it's Abraham having to go so many years with nothing else but the word of God to sustain his faith or David in his Psalms, or Jesus and all the things he said and did, or the apostles and all of their teachings and all of their tribulations. I mean, the point Paul is getting at is everything in the Bible is written for this purpose so that you can endure and so that you can be encouraged to know that you are not alone. You, you join billions of believers from Adam and Eve down to this very day. 
And just as importantly, you join the dozens of people, maybe hundreds, whose faces and names you know by name and by face. You, you know them and you join with them in suffering so that you can encourage one another. You're not alone. See, enduring, as we said at the beginning, by definition is hard. If life were easy, there'd be nothing to endure. But Jesus says you can expect suffering. You can expect to endure in this life. But I've given you myself. I've given you my word. And I've given you each other. So that you can endure together. And overcome all the obstacles, the, the tribulations that come your way. And ultimately, eternally, overcome them in me. With that good news on your heart and mind, I, may God grant you the, the peace and the strength to overcome, to endure in him alone, together with each other and together with his word. For our closing prayer, we're simply going to read verses 5 and 6 of Romans 15. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus, so that with one heart and mouth you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us today and throughout this week as we have endured together from the power of God's word. God be with you today and always.